May we stand, please? Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he was dead, yet shall he live. Whosoever believeth in me shall never die. I know that my redeemer lives, and that he shall stand at the last day of the earth. I shall see God whom I see.
In the midst of all of this, what's going on today? He still worship. He still cares. He still concerned about us. Sir, there's one seat. Thank you for another day, Jeff. We will try to do our best to follow the order of the program. In advance, we say thank you.
Don't you give up You just keep holding on Till the end For it won't be This for this Turn it around for me. It won't always be like this. Thank you, thank you. God will perfect that concerning this. Soon or later, it'll turn in your favor. Yeah. He's turning around for me. It won't always be like this. God will perfect that concerning thee. Cause soon or later, it'll turn in your favor. Yes, he's turning around for you, around for me, around for me, around for me, he's turning around for me, around for me, around for me. Around for me, he's turning around for me. Bless the Lord, he's turning around for me, for you, for us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We, we live it in a day now, uh, people. If you don't put your trust in Jesus Christ, and, and truly with all your heart, mind, spirit, and soul, and look to him and, and believe him, we're in a situation. We are in a situation. He is our only hope and our only way. We're living in the last days. And we got trust him. We got depending on it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He turned it around. It won't be like this always. Here's our strength. At this time, here's our joy. And here's our peace. He's our comforter. At this time, we will have our scripture, old scripture, new scripture coming from Pastor Alice Daniels, after that, we're going to have a prayer comfort by Elder James Daniels, a selection, <coughs> and remarks. Limit them. Okay. Program is in one minute, please. Thank you. <coughs> we'll give honor to God for our being here on today. This is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice, even though we're going through and be glad in it. I have some scriptures I put together for us. Uh, we give honor to the group. We give honor to the family, our family. And we just thank God for what he's doing in our life. For those of you who have your Bible, you want to follow along with me. Psalms 30, verse 5. For his anger endures but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping <laughs> may endure for night. Yeah, yeah. But joy, yeah. joy, yeah. coming in the morning. The morning might not be right now, but it's coming. Your joy is going to come after this. Yeah. Then Psalms 34, 18 tells us, the Lord is not. He near us unto them that are a broken heart. We're broken heart today. Yeah. And saved such as be of a contract spirit, a sad spirit. We're sad. Yeah. But look to God to make us happy. Yeah. In the New Testament reading, John 14, 1 said, let not your heart be troubled. Yeah. 
You believe in God, believe also in me. Yeah. Matthew 11, 28 and 30 gives us some comfort. It says, come unto me, all ye that are laden and heavy laden. We have heavy laden today. Yeah. And I will give you rest. Yeah. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Yeah. For I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. The reading of God for the people. Yes, yes. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sorry don't last always. The only thing that lasts always. 
ways in the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And we can rest for sure that we can depend on him. He'll give you comfort. My sister and my brother. I know. People, I'm standing here not what they told me. Not what I have heard. I'm standing here for what I know for myself. He will give you a peace of mind. He will give you comfort in time of sorrow. He will come to your rescue. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord God, strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. He is the King of glory. It is so. It's done. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.
<laughs> 80 years old. Clarence, 
they coming. Amen. They coming. If they hear somebody got a headache, they coming. Amen. And, you know, they're just, they are the most supportive people you want to see, no matter what they're going through. I lost my mom on last year, and they came, uh, talked to Woody. Um, my mom's sickness and death came so fast. Um, I didn't hardly have time to tell him, but I told Woody, he came, I told Martha, because sister and my mom, they talked on the phone every week since mom been gone. Now it's me and sister talking on the phone every week. But when my mom went away last year, they, they were some of the first ones there right there with me. Clarence was halfway with me because he went to sleep every time he came. Uh, but anyway, his body was still there. <laughs> so I just want to tell them that I love them and they know I'll be here for them. I've been working the late shift and haven't been getting no sleep. I've just been taking a shower, going to their house, sleeping on the porch, sleeping in the kitchen, sleeping everywhere. But they know that um, when this is all over, I'm still going to come. I'm not even going to have to call and say, sister, I'm coming. I'm just going to show up Amen. because they're, they're always there for us. And I love y'all. And I don't know what it is to lose a child because I never did. But the Lord was with me when I lost my mom. I said, it took me 10 months. To for the grief to let up. I don't know when he's going to come and ease your grief, but I do know that he's going to come. I love you guys. Welcome, everyone, and I hope we all thank you all for coming. Uh, it's been a rough it's been a rough week, and to Clarence and Martha, um, it's going to be some rough days in England, and the kids, and even the mother of the kids. It's going to be so rough, and some challenging days, but I pray that God give y'all comfort, peace, and understanding for why this happened. But it's, it's, it's going to be okay, Okay, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in Him. And if you trust in Him, He will come through. I'm going to sing something. How can I give thanks for all of the things you have done for me? Things so undeserved, and yet you gave to prove your love for me. And the voices of a million angels cannot express my.
just on just let me live my life just only pleasing God to thee and if I should gain any praise let it go to count gently remind you of all the wonderful details that made life with your loved one such a precious gift. Inga, may God hold you close to his heart where he can feel your deepest loss and fill you with his deepest love. Love, Lee, D, pray God give peace for you and the family. Wishing you peace to bring you comfort, courage to face the days ahead and loving memories to hold forever in your heart. In deepest sympathy, Lena Ebrum and family. May faith give you strength. May prayers bring you comfort. Thinking of you and praying for you at this difficult time. 
Family, we cannot express the sadness in our hearts. Love, James Jr., Daniels, and family. With deepest sympathy, I cannot take away the storms of life, but I can offer you the shelter of loving you through life challenging times. Sincere condolences. Love you, Destiny Ministries, Apostle Fred and Marcia Ray, Kingston, North Carolina. Remember, I am with you always. Most sacred heart of Jesus. In your great mercy, receive the soul of the Saitling family, whom we entrust to your loving care, and enroll this day in the Sacred Heart Spiritual Society with a perpetual remembrance in the daily mass and prayers offered for all members of the society. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. I am gentle and humble of heart. In trust, excuse me, internal rest, grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May their souls and the souls of all faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. These are the readings of the cards. At the glow, I like the memory of me to be a happy one. I like to leave an overglow of smiles when life is done. I like to leave an echo whispering softly down the ways of happy times and laughing times and bright and sunny days. I like the tears of those who grieve to dry before sun, of happy memories that I leave when life is done. Acknowledgement. The family extends sincere gratitude for all acts of kindness, prayers, and expressions of condolences during this period of bereavement. May God richly bless each of you. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh. 
God got him. He's in God's care. There's nothing we can say or do now to help him. But I do have a word for those of us that's here today. Amen. Is that all right? That's all right. I'm not going to be before you long as a request from the family because time is drawing now and they've gone through too much Amen. already. Amen. It's, 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 it's been kind of tough. Amen. It's kind of tough, but we're going to make it. Amen. Is that all right? Amen. And on today, I'll be giving a brief word from the book of St. John, <coughs> 8 chapter. And I'll just read the seventh verse, and that's it. Because I'm not going to hold them long. They don't go through too much. They, they don't let me know that. They told me they don't want it long. Make it short as possible. It's time to move on. It's time to, you know, kind of get over this thing. Family, I want you to know that God got it. All the healing that you need, he's got it. Whatever standing in the need of, he's got it. He's still on his throne. He will never fail us. He'll come down for you just like he did for the other family. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. Thank you, God. And I'm going to read this seventh verse. And then I'm going to give you my little bit and I'm going to Sit down. Is that all right? Amen. And it reads, <clears throat> So when they continued to ask him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is good, he that is without sin, cast the first stone. That is without sin. Cast the first stone. You see, church, we're living in a time where everybody wants to blame somebody. They want to point fingers. They want to be accusers. Talk about one another. When you need to be working on your own soul salvation. See, see. In, in, in these latter days, these last days right here, God has only given us a chance to get it right with Him. Or to come to Him. Amen. Have I got a witness in this place? Yeah. Amen. See, you see, it's real easy to find fault in somebody else or point fingers at their shortcoming because it takes you out of your comfort and lets you stay in your comfort zone about you. If you understand what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. See, take your mind off your junk. Because every one of us sitting here still got some in our trunk. If there's somebody in here that has arrived already, tell me. Tell me. So you ain't got no right, no reason to be pointing fingers at nobody. God loves us all just the same. We're all his children. And my subject today is don't throw your stone. Everybody, everybody, God Almighty, everybody walking around with not only stones in their hand, they got them in their pocket too. <laughs> oh yeah. They got them, they come in. It's, it's, it's such a sad thing, you know, that, that we want to come down on each other and put each other down instead of trying to lift each other up. Am I right about it? Yeah. See, I told you this word is for, this for, it's for us. Right. It's not for Buddha. Yeah. Okay, you can't do it unless they have for them. Right. So, so we need to learn how to get in the right place with Jesus Christ <coughs> so he can have his way in our lives. Yeah. So if you've got those stones in your hand, you'll drop them and let them go. Sometimes we form opinions. Listen to this, church. We form opinion about people uh, 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 because of what somebody else doesn't see. Right. Right. 
That's right. That's right. You might not shout today, but I want you to get this thing. Yeah. See, because we need to come to ourselves and start treating each other right. Yeah. Come on now. Amen. We we need we need to come to love one another. You don't even know the person. Start spreading rumors. Talking about them. Don't like them because your friend don't like them. That's right. That's right. You need to get to know somebody before you start talking about them. Am I right? Amen. You, you don't need to look. Just because I don't like you, don't mean that this young lady has to not like you. You you you, you got to find out for yourself. That's right. See, it's a shame that we allow the enemy to confuse our mind to the place where we allow that to happen. Uh -huh. Am I right? Yeah. Oh, I tell you, God is still good. So this is not going to so God so loved you, he said to us to love one another as he had loved. Ain't that all right? Ain't that all right? See, there's a thing, a great thing about love. See, love is one of the fruits of the Spirit. It's the greatest one of the fruits of the Spirit. See, because love, it will teach you how to treat people. It will teach you how to respect people. It will teach you how to, you don't have to uh, 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 agree with them, but it will teach you how to Respect what they feel and how they feel. That's what love would do for you. So we need to love one another. Things are not always the way we would like for them to be. But if you stand in the liberty in which God has met and set you free, you can be all right. You can get some love down on the inside. You, you, you can learn how to treat people right. Am I right about it? Now we find in this, this text here in the eighth chapter that there was a woman, listen to this, there was a woman that was caught in the very act of adultery. She had been caught, y'all, right there. She was guilty. Hey, I mean, you know, it's the truth. It's just like it is. I can imagine that the ones that, that had caught her, they were just like this, listen. They were nosy. <laughs> Mama always told us if you go looking for something, you're going to find it. Come on, y'all. Am I right about it? Y'all might not like this kind of preaching. But I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm telling you just like it is. You know, they probably was nosy, busy body. Anybody know anything about busy body people? Every time you turn around, they're running somewhere to somebody trying to tell something. You know, no matter, no matter whether it's right or wrong. Always. They're trying to tell and talk about somebody. I tell you, God is not pleased with that. So what they did, the ones that had caught her in the act, they brought her to Jesus. See, they had a plan. The Pharisees had a plan. They were trying to trip Jesus up. That's what it was. Y'all know, know the story. You read the Bible. They were trying to trip him up. So what happened was, they wanted to know what, what was he going to do about it. See, back in the biblical days, the Mosaic law said that they should punish her and, and kill her. Ain't you glad, good God Almighty, ain't you glad you wasn't living in, 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 back in that day? Huh? See, if you got caught in a sin, they would take you out. Huh? If you did wrong, they would take you out. But look at God. With his good self. He said, no, no. Jesus came. He said, no, no. We ain't going to do it like that. They won't do it that way. Because grace and mercy came on the scene. Gave us a chance. Am I right about it? Somebody tell the Lord. And for mercy. Now, now. So Moses said, well, we should just go ahead and take her off. Jesus said, no, no. Ain't you glad today that he gave you another chance? See, because God heard somebody say that God was a God of a 
second chance. But guess what, y'all? God is a God of many chances. He's a God of many chances. And I didn't forget We were on our side. We started ripping and running and getting tangled up and tied up. He gave us a chance then. He gave us a chance then. He's giving us chances now. You have to do like the prodigal son. Come to yourself so you will know that God will take care of you. Am I right about it? Am I right about it? Somebody say yes. Somebody say yes, Lord. We have to know that he will.
Jesus is the answer. And he is. Uh, I'm good. Uh, I'm good. Uh, you know, so but before you come, let me do this. <laughs> Here because this might be somebody tired of throwing stones. You might be sick of the way they're living their lives. So we'd like to invite you to come to the Lord. You don't have to come up here or whatever. You can just raise your hand and stand with the preacher. Or whatever. But maybe somebody is tired of what they're going through. Extended hand. Give it out to God to a speaker for today, to other men and women of God, to family and friends who have come from afar and near. I'd like to take this opportunity on behalf of this family to say thank you to each and every one for all acts of kindness shown to them during this that time of loss of agreement. I'm sure they would have me say to you, may God's richest blessings be upon each and every one of them. To the family, on behalf of myself and the staff of the College of General Home, we'd like to say thank you for allowing us to be here for you today. We hope that we've done something in some way to lighten your burden. We call it today, we'd like to present you with this token of our appreciation. We call it the Memorial Night. Okay. Wow. cooperation and that will uh, direct you around. We ask you when you view, if you please go directly to your cars if you're planning on going to the cemetery with us and we'll get you in line. Internal will be take place at Homestead Memorial Gardens. Again, we say thank you.